welcome to the Nagwal Zone. My name is Anam. Let's dive straight into it. Quite a while back, I think it's a couple of years ago, I did a video called It Chose You. Link is coming up. A user called Earl Poladen left a really good comment there that I felt would be worth making a video. It's a very long comment. Go ahead and read it on the video itself. Watch the video if you feel like it. What is it a modern warrior does when people try to keep them in line with herd mentality or assert pressure on them to submit and give into the herd mentality? Example, a man of color in society that is kept in lesser positions and is indoctrinated that he will never make anything of himself and so on and so forth. Uh, his fiance is fired because she's with a man of color, he's harassed by the local police, so on and so forth. If a warrior is in this situation, what should he do? Now there's a qualifier that Earl gives later on. I'd like to add that this is not a social commentary on race or anything of that nature. It is a legitimate question. And he also adds that he doesn't feel like he's coming from a victim mentality. It's more that he's genuinely curious to find out what would a warrior do in a situation like this. First off, we have to get very, very clear on one thing. This question is not applicable to the warrior. This situation is not applicable to the warrior because a warrior would not get maneuvered into that situation in the first place. So what you're really asking is not what a warrior would do. What you're really asking is what would an average man do by taking the inspiration of a warrior? Or what would an average man do to emulate the power of a warrior? Do you see what I'm saying? A warrior themselves she or he would not even be maneuvered in that situation in the first place. And, and even if they do, then they would be working in a very, very different way than the average man. So unless someone, you know, you can ask what would a warrior do if you're a warrior's apprentice. But if it's an average man and they're asking what would a warrior do, that question really doesn't make any sense. It, it's kind of, there's no way to answer it. So let's tackle it from the view of the average man or let's tackle it from the view of the Toltec perspective okay sounds like semantics but really it's not it's understanding that a warrior I always I always encounter this strange perception in people that a warrior is somehow just a better version of the average man or a warrior is somehow a, uh, you know, a bit more of an expert than the average man, and that's it. But they're really just kind of like you and me. Uh, no, that's not really it. A warrior is a... The difference between a warrior and the average man is the difference between a leopard and a jackal. It's that big a difference. They're not even the same... Both have paws, both have a tail, both have four legs. The jackal also has a nose and a snout. So does the panther. So if you were to describe it that way, someone would say, oh yeah, they sound like the same animal. But if you actually look at them, feel them, observe them, do, you know, live with them, you will see these are two completely, completely different animals. <laughs> so just because a warrior looks like you and uses the same words, language, English, Spanish or Hindi or whatever they're using, don't be fooled into thinking you're dealing with someone familiar to you. That person is literally using the world of the average man to interface a very alien consciousness <laughs> into the average man's world. It is like what was said by the master Yeshua in the Bible. It is said that be in the world but not of the world. No one but the warrior truly understands what that means. 
right? So let's get that clear. <laughs> a warrior wouldn't be maneuvered in that situation into that situation in the first place. And these situations, what you're talking about, they uh, are fabulous, fantastic opportunities for the warrior apprentice. Now, if Earl was apprenticing with me and they asked me this question, I wouldn't even have to clarify this point. So I hope you understand why this point, it is very important to clear this point first. So now, let's, let's talk about, there's two things at play here in the situation that you describe. One is you have to understand the mechanics of predation. This universe is a predatory universe. This dimension is a predatory dimension. Everything from the micro to the macro is feeding off of each other. Okay, feeding off of its the one step down from its hierarchy and below. So everything is feeding off of what is below it. Do you understand the idea? So it's a predatory based universe. The situations you described, they are not... <clears throat> Let, let, me, let, me, let me put a bomb in here. You know the universe, you know nature doesn't owe you mercy. Nature doesn't owe you justice. Nature doesn't owe you fair deals in life. In fact, you know what? Nature doesn't even owe you a happy outcome. These are all nonsense, disnified bullshit that has been crammed into your head since you were very young. Read you know, Disney movies and Cinderella and watching TV and advertisements and newspapers and blah, blah, comics and novels and uh, this, that and all the schoolwork. And that. it's all disnifying you and taking you away from how nature works. Nature doesn't recognize mercy, does not recognize fairness, does not recognize justice, does not recognize a happy outcome. Nature doesn't recognize all these things. Nature is a process and nature recognizes only one thing, balance. Balance. So, if you are coming into these situations expecting a better outcome, if you are coming into this situation, oh, uh, the cops jumped me because I'm black or uh, what were the other situations? Whatever the other situations are, I didn't get a job because I'm black or I've been indoctrinated and all these complaints, right? All these observations, let's say, <laughs> they're really complaints if you're really honest with yourself. So, you know, nature doesn't owe you a way out of these things, Okay. Just get this very clear. It's you. It's on you. It's you that's going to do it. Nothing outside of you is going to be uh, coming, having mercy on your, on your situation in life and being a little bit generous with you and a helping hand. No, my friend. You, it's on you. Squarely on you. What are you going to do about this? First, it is important to recognize that you cannot blame the mechanics of predation for doing what it does, which is being a predator. Once you take that out of the equation, you have no objections to predation. Once you have no objections to predation, you have truly understood the mechanics of predation. That's how you can have no objection to it. You can relate with it. You can understand it. You can see its side. It's a subtle point, but we are so brainwashed. We are so Disneyfied in our head. There's, it's all just endless Netflix romantic nonsense going on in our heads that we uh, forget what living in nature as a natural instrument, a natural creature is really like. So... No mercy is to be expected, no fairness is to be expected, no justice is to be expected. How are you going to snap out of this 
How are you going to move from here? So recognizing the mechanics of predation will allow you to come to one conclusion. You know what that is? Stop behaving like prey. I'll say that again. Stop behaving like prey. You know, a panther never hunts another panther. A panther hunts a deer. A sparrow does not ever eat another sparrow. A sparrow swoops down on the worm. This is a very deep knowledge. If you, it's easy to say this stuff, but if you can really live this out, become the kind of person who has imbibed this natural process in themselves, you will gain so much personal power in your life. Can you imagine that? You can imagine that. Imagine that you do not behave like prey. How, if I was, if I was hunting you and you did not behave the way I expect you to as prey, what would that do to my hunting? It would really throw it off balance. It would confuse me. It would be so much hassle that I would move on to an easier prey. Remember the mechanics of predation. The way energy moves in the universe is it always moves to the most efficient line. It moves in the most efficient lines of movement. So if I'm hunting you and you're too much hassle to hunt, I won't bother. I'm going to go to something that is easier. You know, the panther out of the herd, the cheetah, out of the herd of deer, it will watch them for hours first to determine who is the weakest and who's the least likely to give the cheetah the hassle of hunting. They never hunt the strong bucks, the big bucks who could fight back or who could run off faster than they can catch them. They hunt the young, the vulnerable, the lame, all those. They're watching for those who are going to behave like prey in the and give them an easy time of it. So it becomes your job, if you are not to behave like prey, to become unpredictable. How are you going to stop behaving like prey? That is something my apprentices learn over time and it is not something I can give you on a YouTube video. <laughs> but the idea is there you can work it out if you wish. Secondly, the second mechanics you have to understand is the mechanics of personal power. The more personal power you gain, the easier it is for you to stop behaving like prey. It is possible to cross a minimum threshold of personal power. Above that threshold, you are called a warrior. Below that threshold, you are either a warrior apprentice or the average man, which below that threshold, for all practical purposes, is the same thing. Your job, if you are to stop behaving like prey, is to get that threshold of personal power accumulated and above that, go above that threshold. The thing is fantastical romances in your head about how powerful I've become is not going to cut it. <laughs> You'll crumble at the first sight of the petty tyrant, no matter how tough you think you are. And believe me, everyone loves to pretend to be better than they really are. My advice is to get very honest. Learn to get really honest with yourself. Where am I really? And that won't come by jerking off in your head. It'll come by pitting yourself against petty tyrants. That's when you will know whether you can bite bullets or whether you're a straw man <laughs> made of flimsy, a house of cards, right? Thinking that they are some kind of big superhero, yeah? So, 
the mechanics of personal power is is it should it will force you to become honest with yourself because if you go around thinking you're this powerful person and you I've got personal power I've read three of Castaneda's books I am very powerful I watch Anam's videos I am very powerful I oh, yes me I've watched all his videos I've watched his first video and his last video and I'm subscribed to Anam and uh, I I am powerful. Yes, yes. I understand all that he's saying. You you in for a rude awakening. In terms of martial arts, I've seen it on the street. I've had my fair share of uh, let's just say street episodes <laughs> because that was the only yeah. I've had my fair share of street episodes, and on the street. All your martial art bullshit gets seen for what it is. The big tough guys who have been like, oh, I'm a karate man, black belt, oh, I can break boards. Well, boards don't hit back. And when your face is slamming on that concrete, that concrete is going to hit you back. So bullshit comes out, point being, Bullshit is revealed very quickly by reality, like that. And remember this, time, time is the great revelator. Time is the great revelator. So these two things you have to understand, the mechanics of predation and the mechanics of harvesting, gathering, generating, creating, personal power. My apprentices get this in detail over years, months, years. It takes a long time. This is not something you can watch a video on and feel good about it. Okay, so I don't want to give you any false pictures here. Nothing's going to happen after watching this video. You're not going to be more powerful than you were before. That will come with training. <laughs> now, Here's a phrase I'd like you to remember. You, I'd like you to etch this on your heart. Write it on your heart. Write it in your consciousness. Write it where you will never forget it. Write this phrase. This will hold you, this, this will hold you steady when the petty tyrant's breathing down your neck. It will hold you steady, this phrase. A lock with a thousand keys. A lock with a thousand keys. This, if you can remember, in the most difficult times of your life, a lock with a thousand keys. You will always be able to come out of any situation in your life. You know why? Because that situation has a thousand solutions. A lock with a thousand keys. Not just one key that you have to go and huff and puff and climb mountains, go to Tibet and learn with the lamas some ancient secret knowledge and how to empower yourself and do all that. No. A thousand solutions are laid out before you. A thousand keys are neatly laid out before you. Choose which key do you want. A th there's, you are surrounded by solutions. Surrounded. But it is the perspective that a predator gives the prey. You know what perspective the predator gives the prey? That the prey has no way out. If I hunt you and I cannot convince you that for you there's no way out, I've got you. If I can't convince you of that, you'll wriggle away. You'll, you'll be elusive. You'll just wriggle away. You'll just, you know, it will be too hard for me to hunt you. But if I can convince you that there is no way out for you when I am hunting you, guess how easy it makes it for me? Because I've already got you. If you accept that, I've got you. So a lock with a thousand keys. That guy who's been harassed by the police, that colored man who lost his job, yeah, lock with a thousand keys. 
Are you going to realize that? Are you going to look around and start looking for those thousand keys? Or are you going to sit and wonder? Oh, you know what? There are hundreds of thousands of millions of black people, of white people, of brown people, yellow people, neon people, red people, blue people, purple people, green people, every bloody people, chocolate people, vanilla people, pistachio people, mango people, every damn kind of people who have learned that each lock nature gives a thousand keys and they go from strength to strength. So there's a deep perspective sh shift here. If you can get this, there will be nothing that you will come across in your life that will defeat you up here and in your heart. You will always know, yeah, that's good. It's a lock with a thousand keys. Now I've got to find a thousand. There are a thousand keys. I've got to find just one of them and put that in the lock and move it. Here's a little key for you. Go to YouTube search and search for a name you are creators tv run by a guy called justin perry black used to work in a warehouse used to dream of empowering himself enough to lead a different kind of life and he did he did his story is amazing his affirmations are the ones i use personally so here's that little key for you affirmations what would happen if that guy who's uh, colored and lost his job and black and uh, police jumped him, black and wife left him and all the different black, black, black. Okay, good. What happens if that black man starts saying to himself, I am getting powerful each day. Each day that passes adds power to me. I am becoming more and more powerful. In fact, I'm starting to feel like I could walk through walls and the walls would give way. There's a lock that I'm facing that has a thousand keys and I am capable of finding each one of them when I want, as I want it. You are stopping thinking like prey and you are thinking exactly like the predator cannot handle. Affirmations is just one key. Mantra, Sanskrit mantra, incredible, another key. There are so many keys, so many keys, but you know what the problem is? They require intelligent repetition. Intelligent repetition. That amount of investment in oneself, consistent, monotonous, ongoing, soul-killing investment. Well, it's not really soul-killing. It's You have to give up laziness. You have to give up negative thinking. You have to give up... You have to plug up all the places within you that uh, are seeping power out from you. You have to learn to be honest with yourself. You have to learn to not care what others think. So many things. You see... We come back to that first point. That is exactly why a warrior would never be maneuvered, would never find themselves in that situation. <laughs> so hope this answers a bit of uh, what Earl was trying to ask about. What would a warrior do in this situation? Well, they would at least, let's just say, have the tools available to them to get out of that situation easily. And you know one of the greatest assets a warrior has that the average man does not have is the warrior knows how to wait. She knows how to wait. She knows that the trap is mine, the bait is mine, and time is mine. I will conceal myself and wait till what I want 
comes along, sniffs at the bait, and falls into my trap. It is my strategy that I'm employing. I'm not at the mercy of the winds. The warrior, she knows how to wait. That is one of the greatest assets a warrior has. A warrior waits patiently, alertly, vibrantly, totally connected with her environment, her surroundings, with herself. And that makes her immune to being preyed upon. Can you see how that would work? I want you to see how, what I'm saying, how would that even work? And that is the way out of all this. That is the way out. You got to learn how to wait. If you are someone who expects quick results and can't repeat and repeat up till mastery level, if you're someone who can't do that, why are you even watching these videos? You're basically just jerking off, wasting your time and nothing will happen to you. I, I can guarantee you nothing will happen in your life. You will be the loser that you are. Absolutely true. Straight talk. If you cannot change and expect greater things from yourself by learning to wait and, and work patiently, intelligent repetition that creates mastery. If you can't do that, you know, forget about it, man. Just go watch Netflix. What's the point? Hmm? However, of course, I'm just being tongue-in-cheek here. I'm being a little bit facetious. Of course, these videos will uh, help, to, you know, wake up and get out of that sleepwalking mode. But these are the essential steps right here. I've laid them out for you. See if you can take advantage of them. Let me know what you think in the comments. What are your thoughts, right? And walk in freedom. Walk in freedom. Stay blessed. Bless others. Bless yourself. And always, always, never betray yourself. Never, never betray yourself. Be honest with yourself. That way you stop becoming a prey and you step out of the predator-prey cycle. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.